Well, taking a live look right now at downtown Spokane, the pavilion lit up in blue. Looks like a lovely night out there, but definitely the calm before the rain is headed our way. Good evening, everyone. Thanks for being here on this Friday night. I'm Regina on. Let's get straight into weather with Thomas Patrick, who is out on the outdoor weather center for us tonight. So Thomas, can you tell me more about this rain headed, headed our way? A lot of folks are pretty excited about it, I'm sure. Yeah, and the excitement comes from we need it. We need it pretty badly because over the past two months we haven't seen very much rain so it is going to be welcomed even though it is falling on the weekend but we just have cloudy skies out here uh, at the moment but it's a thin layer of some high clouds so it's not going to rain anytime soon just yet in fact if you step outside you will be able to see the moon in fact i can see it above my head it's actually almost straight behind me at this moment so here's where the cloud cover is coming from with our next weather system already raining light rain or scattered showers across the western portions of our pacific states here including washington and oregon maybe a few light radar returns just now into central Washington as well. Probably not hitting the ground just yet. Give it a couple more hours into tomorrow morning is when we'll really start to see the light rain starting to come down at about seven or eight o'clock in the morning will be the onset of this rain and then it rains clear through the rest of the morning hours and into the early afternoon as well. A longer duration event will do us a bit more good in terms of the rain benefit. It's not going to be any kind of downpours, though. It pretty, stays pretty light in terms of rainfall, but for most of the day come tomorrow and a cooler day for Saturday. Rain chances continue into Sunday and at least one more day come next week as well. So I'll be tracking the entire duration of this event, let you know how long it lasts and how scattered or isolated some of our later rain chances will be, as well as how much rain is in the works and compare that to how little rain we've seen over the past two months. We also know that when we have the resources, when we have the firefighters and we have the air resources to get on these fires quickly, we can keep them small. We can contain them quicker. Now, a bill that sets aside $125 million to prevent and fund wildfires in Washington State sailed through the State House and now goes to Governor Jay Inslee for his signature. Yesterday, he, the House voted unanimously with the Senate amendments made to the bipartisan legislation. Morgan Chow live now in the newsroom to break down what the bill means and what the money will go towards. Morgan. Regina, wildfires are already starting back up following the 2020s deadly fire season. Last year, more than 800,000 acres burned. A town was decimated and a little boy lost his life. We spoke with Commissioner of Public Lands Hillary Franz today about a new bill that will boost wildfire response, accelerate forest restoration, and support community res resilience. Our wildfires keep getting drastically worse. According to the DNR, the number of acres burned in 2020 nearly tripled from 2016. Over the five out of the last six years had catastrophic fire seasons. Um, frankly, it's become the anomaly is having no fires or not no fires, but limited fires. Yeah, we are predicting it's going to be another pretty bad fire season. Commissioner of Public Lands Hillary Franz says that in April of 2020, Washington had a total of 162 fires. We are not even through the month and we've already had 135. This trend in increasing fire danger has caught the eye of Washington legislators. The House voted unanimously to pass Bill 1168 to Governor Jay Inslee's office. This bill would provide $125 million every two years to boost wildlife response, accelerate forest restoration, and support community resilience. It may seem like a pricey investment, but Franz says we need it. We're seeing more fires and we still have the same amount of air resources. Mm -hmm. um, we had a number of those fires during the Labor Day firestorm. Um, we frankly were having to move. We only have 11 helicopters. We were having to move those Hueys between three to four catastrophic fires. Mm -hmm. um, one for three to four catastrophic fires. We really needed more than one on each one of those fires to quickly contain them. Let's break down some of that 125 million. We're adding additional helicopters and updating the current ones, as well as adding 100 new firefighters and new equipment for both state and local fighters. The money also goes to the goal to treat 1.25 million acres over the next 20 years, which will help restore forest health. Also, improved warning and communication systems, as well as increased engagement with non-English-speaking communities in their home language. 
She says that it may seem like a lot of money, but it's not in actuality. In the historic 2015 fire season, the state spent more than $300 million to just react to wildfires. She says preparing and setting aside money ahead of time will help strategically battle the season. The only problem with this bill is that the money would come at the end of July. And since a huge portion of it is dedicated to training firefighters and getting new equipment, Fran says we probably won't see the impact of this bill until the 2022 fire season. She adds that the governor should be receiving the bill and hopefully signs it this coming week. She also wants to remind everyone that 90% of wildfires are started by humans. So to be conscious of your yard and your activities. Reporting in the newsroom, Morgan Trow, Crime 2 News. Back to you on desk. Morgan, thank you. We do have an update now on a story that we have been following about a five year old girl who was stabbed and her mother brutally murdered in her Spokane garage. According to the girls and five year old Lily is now breathing on her own after suffering from multiple stab wounds in an attack that left her mother Cassie dead also with multiple stab wounds. According to police, 41 year old Joshua Phillips was identified as the suspect and is being held at the Spokane County Jail for second degree murder. His bond set at one $1.5 million. Well, the suspect in the murder of Michaela Young was supposed to make a plea today, but he changed his mind at the last second over concerns he had with the plea deal. 29 year old Anthony Fuerte faces murder and robbery charges involving the death of a 24 year old Michaela Young. She was found dead in the roadway Inn in February last year. Fuerte's attorneys and the prosecutor saying the deal will remain on the table. They want to reschedule the plea hearing for next week. If Fuerte does not take the plea deal, the case will go to trial in mid-June. The victim's family was in court today and young sister Emily says they want this case to go to trial. We're disappointed. We feel like Michaela um, deserves more than this. She really does. She deserves more than a plea deal. And we're just really disappointed in our system. Court records indicate the victim and Fuerte were in a romantic relationship before her death. She was found in the North Spokane Motel with multiple stab wounds, and according to court documents, she was afraid Fuerte was going to kill her because he believed she had set him up to be arrested. Well, attorneys in the Vallow Daybell case arguing over the DNA samples that were collected. Both Chad Daybell and Lori Vallow are charged in the connection to the disappearance of Vallow's two children, seven year old JJ Vallow and 16 year old Tylee Ryan, but have not been charged with causing their deaths. Daybell's defense attorney asked a judge to weigh in on DNA samples that were collected in the case. His lawyer filed a motion yesterday asking a judge to block the prosecution from doing any more DNA testing on evidence collected at the scene. Trials for Vallow and Daybell are set to begin on July 12th. For more details on this story, just head to our website. That is creme.com. Spokane County's evaluation date is inching closer, which could mean the possibility of moving back into phase two. We'll explain what that would mean coming up next.